Welcome to the channel Engineers and Enthusiasts. Today we are diving deep into the complete EPC process for oil pipeline construction from the drying board to the oil flow. If you are involved in oil and gas or you want to start this job career as a planner, scheduler or as an engineer, this video gives you an end-to-end -end walkthrough of what it takes to build a full oil production pipeline. Let's get started. As of now, we are going through EPC project. So E stands for engineering phase. Every EPC project start with this phase. This includes pipeline route selection and feasibility studies, topographic and geotechnical surveys, environmental and regulatory approvals, detailed design of the pipeline, size, material, coating, wall section, pig launcher and block valve sizing. This engineering team finalized drying, material specifications, hydraulic profiles and safety requirements. This output becomes the foundation for procurement and construction planning. Now we are going to start with pipeline procurement phase. Once designs are approved, we move into the procurement phase. Key materials include line pipes, API 5L, X, 60 schedule are similar, valves and fittings, bends, flanges, spools and insulation kits, welding consumables and anti-corrosion coatings. All these things will be categorized as bulk items or long lead items as per their availability nature. Pipes are ordered in bulk, often from global suppliers and undergo strict quality assurance and quality control coating and testing before shipment. From a planning point of view, procurement involves long lead tracking, inspection schedules, shipping plans and site delivery alignment as well. Construction phase. Now comes the heart of the EPC, the construction phase broken down into key steps. Number one, road preparation and access roads. In this section, land will be cleared, graded and right of way will be marked. And schedule must account as a planning engineer, you need to consider this information that how and when this land acquisition will be done. Because there are certain delays in such kind of milestones that is going to impact on our construction. Number two, stringing and pipe bending. Pipes are laid out along the trench line and bent using cold or hard bending machines based on the terrain or nature of the earth. Number three, welding. Automatic and manual welding of joints using certified procedures. Number four, NDT and inspection. Each weld undergoes non-destructive testing NDT using ultrasonic or radiographic methods. Five, Joint coating. After NDT is done, the joints are coated for corrosion resistance. Number six, trenching. Special trenchers are excavators. Dig the trench typically two to three meters deep. Number seven, lowering in. Pipes are gently placed into the trench using side booms. Number eight, padding and backfilling. Screen soil or padding material is placed around the pipe to protect the coating followed by trench backfilling. Number nine, hydro testing. Water is filled in pipeline sections. Uh, make sure that this test will be conducted. If 100 kilometer pipeline is there, you are going to make 20 to 30 kilometer blind flange and going to conduct this hydro testing. You are going to fill water in this 20 to 30 kilometer section of pipeline and going to pressurize it for a certain period of time to make sure about leaks and cracks. Number 10, final tie-ins and crossings. All segments are connected via tie-ins. Special crossings like rivers, roads, use horizontal directional drilling, HDD or direct pipe method. These activities are scheduled using CPM logic within Primavera P6 with key attention to critical path, float zone, testing windows and environmental hold points. Commissioning phase. After mechanical completion, the pipeline enters into the commissioning phase. This includes cleaning, gauging and drying, nitrogen purging to clean inside soil sand of the pipeline, installation of block valves pig launchers and safety systems, instrumentation checks and scatter integration, final pressure test and leak detection. 
At this stage, planners track punch list items handover and prepare for pre-startup safety reviews, which is called PSSR. Number five, HSE and environmental control. Throughout all phases, HSE measures are strictly implemented. Dust and spill controls, safe handling of pipe joints and welding tools, managing noise, habitat protection and waste disposal, emergency response plans along the route. Every EPC project aligns with ISO 14001, ISO 45001 and client HSE requirements. Number six. For planning engineers, pipeline EPC involves, first of all, as a planning engineer or scheduler, if you want to develop your skill set, you need to acquaint it with certain documentations. BOM, Bill of Material, what kind of material is required to construct this project? BOQ, Bill of Quantities, all the work description given in that document. WBS should be broken down by chainage. Like if you have pipeline project of 100 km, you need to break down that 100 km into four phases like 1 to 25 km, 25 to 50 km, 50 km to 75 and so on. So that is the breakdown by chainage. Then you have to resource spread allocation per chainage or front. Schedule logic based on real construction flow like survey to trenching, trenching to stringing, to welding, then entity, then coating, then lowering in the trench, backfill, and then hydro test and tie in. These series of activities are going to show dependency and going to formulate critical path method. Then monitoring productivity in kilometer per day. When you are going to set up your daily based work you need to set up a productivity sheet that every activity should be labeled with respect to their concerning productivity that should be approved by the client and consultant on the basis of this productivity you are going to evaluate duration which will be assigned to each and every single activity then using calendars for weather terrain or permit hold zones you need to assign your daily basis work routine to the calendars, your work week pattern to the calendars and your gusted holidays. And in between there, if you are going to evaluate your weather across the year, your nature of the earth over there, that what kind of the conditions should be there and the permit potential delays. If you are going to absorb all these days, then you are going to develop a realistic critical path. Then tracking long lead items is one of the most challenging thing. If you require certain items on pipeline construction, then you should contact with the suppliers and promising vendors with the help of your procurement team. Contracts should be very clear. Items should be clearly specified with respect to designer requirement. And it should be very much clear on the procurement delivery date that when we need such kind of items, on site then your s curves generation your cash flows your material requirement plans are going to give you a clear vision when we need project funding requirements when we need our material on the site area such kind of things are going to provide planning engineer the full control to implement for our project success along with that planning engineer need to conduct with the tracking phase with the implementation of earned value management analysis to give visualization to our project tracking like SPI, CPI, schedule variance, cost variance, estimate at completion, estimate to complete and budget at completion. And there you have it, a complete walkthrough of an oil and gas pipeline EPC project from engineering to commissioning. These projects require tight coordination, real-time tracking and expert planning to deliver safely on time and within budget. Let me know in the comment if you would like a Primavera P6 template, Excel tracker or full planning toolkit for planning project on pipeline construction projects. So don't forget to write in the comment area so that my team can approach you people. Thank you very much and before signing off this video, I would request to subscribe this channel and share this link with your fellows. Thank you.